Hey guys, welcome back to the Aurora Group. This is Juice. So today, this is a shout out for my buddy Ground Pounder, who just picked up the Mustang and some World War II maps, and he says he can't figure out the uh, engine management. And you know that's to be expected with the Mustang, because I actually flew this thing for a year before I learned how not to seize the engine, uh, the TF-51D and the P-51. Uh, I would fly it until it died and then just glide down or crash land and I'd get a new airplane so but once I learned how to do all this it came out pretty good so we are going to do all of this on the ground today with the engine running but I'm going to show you guys some stuff now over here starting on the left this is your airflow management right here carburetor air control right there and this is for carb heat now it's not modeled in the TF-51D yet but I don't know if it's modeled correctly on carb heat for the P-51. If you guys have flown the P-51 at altitude and used the carb heat, let me know. Uh, so you've managed the system. Over here is your trim. These little control indicators here on the side. If you look over to the left, you'll see three big wheels. One's vertically and two are horizontally. you got your rudder trim, which you'll need to map to something for left and right rudder trim. And you'll start and take off with six degrees of trim to the right. Aileron trim will be neutral, but I usually do that to my coolie hat on my HOTAS switch. On my, on my joystick, I have the Warthog, Thrustmaster Warthog Hostess, and then your aileron trim is, or elevator trim is down here. That's aileron trim right there on the top, right by the mixture, that red ball, and then. Now the other thing you'll have to manage is your propeller, your P, and this is your RPM settings. And then you'll see this as we run up the engine. That right there is set like that, so. We've got the airplane started. Let's go ahead and close the carb cover switch. So now the supercharger right here, you can map that to some buttons or switches to make that, to map those. Let's see what I have those mapped to. Let's see, are they down here maybe? I'll have to see what I have them mapped to in the in the settings. So, But I usually don't use that very much. I let it auto, I put it in automatic mode and let that take care of it. When this light's on here, that's when the uh, turbocharger or the supercharger is engaged at high altitude. Once you reach above, I saw it come on around 18,000 feet one time. I go, what's that yellow light? And I had to look it up. Fuel boost, I just leave on all the time, but I guess you can turn it off during some, times of, uh, some parts of flight. If you watch Kermit Weeks' video on his P-51 Mustang series, he'll tell you about it and stuff like that. So I don't mess with the oil dilute and the starter and the primer are just for starts. Now your magnetos are right here and you just leave them in the both position. Your gun sight for your camera and your guns, you'll have to map that like to a switch or reach down and right click and left click that's down there by just above the fuel cock right here if I shut this off. That right there. You'll have to map that. And then the other thing I ma recommend you map too is once you're in gun mode, I, r I recommend you map the uh, types of sight you're going to use. This is the fixed sight, this is the combined sight, and this is the air-to-air -air sight. And then once you do that, you can also, if you've got some extra hat switches and stuff, you can map your gun sight range, reticle range, and size. See how it changes that right there as I'm moving those across? I have those on a uh, little hat switch on my joystick. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off, put it back in safe mode. Now, the other things that you're going to have to manage, and probably the big one, is the RPMs in your manifold pressure once you get up to altitude. You take off with full props forward. See this button moving here over by the throttle? And this is the throttle here. So let's go ahead and take off. Which way is the wind blowing? You guys see the windsock anywhere around? Let's go find a windsock. There's a windsock right there. Okay, in the Mustang, I'm taking off with full flaps up. Flaps full up. We're going to take off with the canopy open. Now, this is not what it normally sounds like. This is what it sounds like when I'm recording, so you guys can hear me. So we're going to go down the taxi down the wind line here. We've got a tailwind right now, so we're going to go down here and turn around. And when we take off, we're going to take off back that way. All right, we'll slow down a little bit, and then I'll bury one foot pedal in the brake. Spin it around. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so what I typically do is I'll have the 
rudder trim at six degrees, aileron trim neutral at zero, and I'll have a little bit of nose down forward trim on the elevator trim. And then I will check over here, make sure my oil pressure and oil gauges are all up. It'll hold the brakes here and learn it up. Now some of the other things I'll show you on the ground before we get up in the air is your lights are over here. And then right on this top row here, these are the two switches you have to turn on to get the airplane started. These are the electrical switches here. But this right here, I'm going to flip one up. That's the gun heat switch. And here's the pedo heat. And one day, Jolly Chief and I were flying at altitude. Uh, that's Gumby in our group. And we were flying at altitude. Let's go ahead and uncage the uh, attitude indicator. And we were flying at altitude, and our airspeed indicator started working like an altimeter. And then what happened was is the pedostatic system had frozen over. So our elevation on the airfield right now is we are at 351 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and dial in my altimeter to about, there's 100, 200, 351 feet right there. All right, got it set to the altitude. And if I had a compass rose here, or if I knew what the radial was on a uh, on a runway, I'd set my compass right there to it. So let's go ahead and push. Double check everything else. And when we get up in the air, I'll show you how to manage the prop settings so that you won't fry the engine. So I'm just slowly giving it gas. Just letting it catch up. Not pushing. Don't yank your don't yank your throttle forward. Then I'm gonna lower the nose and this one I'm gonna be on the pedals. And now I'm gonna pull back and let's get above those trees. Woohoo! Just barely made it. Okay, you reach down, gear handle up. Climb out, we'll go up and to the altitude there. Now while we're going a little slow, I have it I recommend you map it, but I have the canopy switch mapped to a forward back switch for canopy open canopy close now it's back in neutral position I have a three position switch for that all right once we're climbing and we've got a good climb rate I'm gonna go ahead and take the P the propeller switch I call it the P switch or the P lever I'm gonna bring that back to about 2450 rpms just between 24 and 25 now if you look at the gauges on the right the two big ones that are farthest to the right and to the height you see manifold pressure right there and then right below it and slightly right, you'll see RPMs. I got the RPMs down to 25. Now with my throttle, I'll bring the manifold pressure back to about 3,600. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep both of those in the green arc most of the time, depending on what kind of power I need. Now, you see our ball's not centered. What I've got to do is I've got to slowly weed off the trim, the rudder trim, over to zero, and then I'm countering with the pedals. And Trim is based off of the airspeed of the airflow going over your control surfaces. So you know you, if you trim the airplane for a certain speed and you change speed, uh, increase or decrease, you may have to adjust trim. And that's, that's most aircraft that you trim to fly. That's unless you have a fly-by-wire system or an automatic trim. That's the way it works. So, All right, let's see how we're doing here. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim up the airplane so I can fly it hands off. Let's see where this goes. Now, if, if your ball is slightly to the right, you're going to want to trim to the right with the rudder. See how I'm trimming it right there? I'm just I'm using the rudder trim. And then if the airplane's trying to climb, let's get above these clouds. And then what I recommend guys do is don't trim, don't trim the aileron trim until after you've trimmed the rudder trim. Get the rudder trim first, then you can trim the aileron trim if you need to. Sometimes you won't need to. All right, we're climbing up above the clouds. Now, one of the things that I want to show you how to manage, we'll check our gauges here. Let's come back on power just a little bit. We've got enough to climb with. And it just makes a minute uh, impact on your power to put that throttle back that far. Just uh, I just moved it like a quarter of an inch back. All right, we're climbing out here. Next thing you'll want to do is come down, and you'll want to get familiar with your fuel system. Now, right now, I am on the left main tank. This is in the P-51, not the... TF-51D. So if I go back here, you can see there's a fuel tank and some radios and electrical equipment back there. The P-51 has this, but the TF-51 doesn't. It has no internal gas tank except for the wing tanks, the two wing tanks. And those are the wing tanks, not the external tanks, not the drop tanks. If you guys want to see my rant on drop tanks, just put in your YouTube search, Air Warfare Group drop tanks, or external fuel tanks. You'll see my rant video on that. 
Now, I fly the P-47 in that video. All right, we're climbing at about 800, 900 feet per minute. Now the fuel tanks, I fly for about the first 45 minutes on left tank, and then I switch to the right tank like that. You can right click it and left click it to get it around. There's left click twice over the right tank. Now what I tell people in, in, in emergency management, when you have something happen in the airplane that you didn't want to happen, always ask yourself, what was the last thing I did? What did I do? If, you know, if the engine starts to sputter, what did I do five minutes ago? Now, if we're in an altitude with the temperature outside, the outside air temperature is not low enough to really need the pitot heat, but if we're going to use it, we'd go over here and right-click this switch right there and lift it up. So now the pitot heat's on. Like I said, you don't need it at low altitude and, and high temperature, but if it's freezing out, you'll need it. And I t trust me, it works. Now your radios, I don't know how to turn tune the radio. If you guys have a good video on that, link it. But on the presets, I have you have four channels that you can set up in the mission editor, and I go ahead and push channel A, and then I can talk to people on channel A in SRS. So every now and then I'm checking my gauges. Right now, I'm, the temperatures are good. I'm a little low on overall coolant temp. Oil temp looks looks good. Fuel temp is looking good. Coming up through, we are through 5,000 feet right now. 5,700 and climbing on the channel map. Let me let you guys look around a little bit, see what it looks like down there. Good old England. We took off out of Lynn and we're flying up and around. And I can't wait. You guys notice I've been on all my World War II videos, I've been putting the two week series post on it. It, uh, I, I am really hoping that Normandy 2 is right around the corner. I really, really do. I, I think it's going to be a wonderful map. So, if you guys want, if you haven't seen that yet, just look a couple of videos back. You'll see all the coverage we've done on Normandy 2. And then I've also linked Reflected Simulations comments about his uh, Normandy 1 campaigns that will be ported over to Normandy 2. According to, uh, according to Ugra Media, it shouldn't affect the missions, but he's going to double check them and see. It might move an airplane here or there and might have to change something. So, here we go. Now, let's look and see if there's anything else I didn't cover. And if I did, if I missed something, guys, put it in the comments, point out some stuff. And if you've got links to videos, that would be great, too. Because the goal is not to show people how much we know, is to show people that we can uh, have everybody share in the comments here to make the whole community better. So... Go up there and check my eye makeup. Looks good. All right. So, Ground Pounder, let me know if you need somebody to fly with, and I'll meet you over at Aerobatics Online. We'll jump on Discord together, and I will fly with you to help you get those systems managed, buddy. That's it for the Mustang. Let me look around the cockpit. Oh, you'll need something to manage your lights with, too. So, I recommend you map a couple switches to your, if you've got a couple of sliders and ailerons. Uh, Stand by for this week. Coming Monday or Tuesday, I'll have a Spitfire video. Spitfire video on managing the ground taxi and takeoff, and landing on that, and why it is so hard to fly. Um, hard, mostly hardly to taxi and take off and land. And uh, and that'll be coming up on Monday. So hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody. This is Juice out.